Hey, what's up, guys? Today we have uh, another irregular release of My Hero Academia, so we have a slightly altered intro. This week, today is another Thursday, and another Thursday means another chapter of My Hero Academia. This week we have chapter 226, and this chapter picks up with more, elaborating more on Toga's backstory, which I didn't expect for us to actually get. What we have is... First off, we find out that uh, Curious, code name. I, I, I don't remember her name, but Curious was something that was pretty easy to remember. But we find out that Curious, the reporter lady, she actually has been uh, investigating Toga for years, like a good number of years. And uh, we find out that, that the name we know her as isn't her real name. Uh, let me elaborate on this. We start off with a flashback talking about uh talking about for, it takes place from one of Toga's classmates' point of view, and they're they're uh, they're actually ratting her out to the principal over something she did. And what as they explain, first off, they blur they black out what her real name is. I guess we'll get a reveal sometime later down the line, but they black out what her real name is. And what we see, they're, they're reporting her because they're afraid of her. And they're saying, like, when we found her, they found her sipping the blood of one of the popular kids through a straw. So, and like we, and they say, like, the look on her face, it was, it was a look of ecstasy and, like, and how, like, sickening it was. But she was also crying at the same time she was doing it. Like, she looks pretty happy, but she's also crying, so... I'm not sure why she's crying. She's probably crying because uh that uh I don't know, broken mask, you know, concept. So then we get a flashback to her youth and when she was a younger kid and uh she it shows up that she's bringing her mother, her mother and father a dead baby bird. Like, well, not even a dead baby bird. It's just a baby bird and she's talking about how cute it was. And then we flash forward back to things in real time, and she's telling them, she's saying, like, what what really is a normal life, you know? And and uh, the interview goes on. Toga, she's still pretty beat up, and she's, uh, the curious even mentions on this, she speaks on the fact that from the explosions, her insides should be tearing and ripped apart, like, they're, and she should be bleeding internally. And you can see Toga, Things for Toga don't look very good because she, uh, she, she's like, she's on the ground. She's trying to fight back. She looks, she even looks dead at one point. And during this, Curious, like, walks up to her. She starts, like, she pats her on the head and she starts to sympathize with her. And she's saying, like, she's saying there's a, there's this thing called court counseling. And, you know, what you have isn't, in itself, it really wouldn't be, a, you know, weird or abnormal because she has an admiration for the thing that is her quirk but like or like what makes her quirk work but the thing is her admiration is for blood and that kind of so it still goes on that normal that normalcy like aspect to where the thing she admires or the thing that she's interested in is like what what makes her quirk work but the thing that makes her quirk work is blood and it's for her to be admiring blood or interested in that it kind of you know it takes away from that you know that's not normal that's actually bad and like her quirk just to use her quirk she has to steal someone else's blood and she considers it bad so it looks like she's actually consoling her she pat her head and she's telling her like she's telling her like and she uh she keeps picking away at her she's like yeah this is what your story actually is isn't it like this this is, uh, she's asking her all these questions, like, yeah, you probably felt like this, and then we skip back, like, while she's asking these questions, Toga, I'm not sure if she blacked out, because, again, she did look blacked out, but, or at least dead, but, uh, we see in her flashback that that baby bird she had, what she did is, like, she bit into it with her vampire teeth, and she started to suck the blood from it, and that's when her parents found her, and they, uh, they, like, what are you doing to that bird? Why are you smiling like that? Like, it's creepy. Like, what is wrong with you? 
And so from then on, that's when that's when she started. That's when she took up the mask because, uh, you know, she learned that being trying, you know, sucking the blood from things like that isn't really. Uh, it's not looked at as normal, and just the fact that, like, when her parents said it to her, it's probably what made her insane. But when her parents, when she's, when her parents find her sucking blood from the bird, their immediate response is disgust. They don't understand what she's doing, and they like say like the thing that makes her smile is creepy, and like what she's doing is creepy, even though she's happy, and she's smiling. They're like, yeah, that's creepy. Well, what are you doing? Like, and then they even say like, why can't, why can't you just be normal, and stuff like that. So while she's picking away at her, Toga freaks out and she like tries to she tries to stab, she tries to stab uh Curious and. Curious, she brings out this, like, crazy metal glove thing. And I'm not sure if she... I'm, I think what she did was she put the bomb on Toga's head when she tapped her twice, when she patted her on the head. I think she put a bomb on her head. And, like, this glove was to protect her. Or she either put the bomb on the glove and she punched Toga with it and, like, blew up her face. And, again, that you just see Toga covered in blood, about black blacked out and honestly I thought I thought where the coach she was gonna do it. I thought he was just gonna she was, he was gonna kill her off this this uh this chapter. But no, that's when she uh the reporter continues on with her investigation and asks her these questions. So she's not actually dead. And she asks her like she says like was any of my assumptions incorrect? Like was I was I wrong about anything I need to know from you? And Toga like yells like no and she's saying, like, yes, everything you said about me is correct, but she's also yelling no because I don't think anybody really wants to be picked apart like this and, like, have their, like, life scrutinized and looked at under a magnifying glass and look, studied as if they're some kind of animal. But everything she's saying about her is actually true, and the fact that she's saying all these things, it probably, you know, it's taking a toll on Toga. Toga. And she's running away, and you see, like, her face is just completely covered in blood. She can hardly open her eyes, and she looks like she's falling apart. And then she uh, she gets bombed again, but after this, she turns into Ochiko, or Raka, whichever one you want to call her. And she, uh, and, and it's weird, because it's like, <laughs> it's like, why the hell did she turn into her? And... Even this gets picked on, like, this gets, like, looked at under a magnifying glass by Curious. She's like, oh, my God, you're going to make me, like, cry. Like, you you, you thought, like, I'm about to die. I might as well die looking pretty, right? Cause so she, first off, we found out that her quirk, she can store blood. So if she takes blood from months ago, she can store it. She can keep it. She can transform into any person at any time as long as she still has that stored up amount of blood in her. And whenever she does transfer it, transform into somebody, uh, that uh, that stockpile of blood slowly depletes. So she turns into Raka, and she's like, uh, and the lady with the bomb, she comes in to blow up, to hit her one more time, like with the bomb and kill her. And this is the, this is the what the fuck moment of the chapter. Toga, wow, trans formed into a raka touches touches curious and everyone there and makes them float with the zero gravity quirk and she finds out that her quirk actually has another aspect to it to where whoever blood she absorbs she also is able to use their quirk and uh curious even comments on this she's like did you did your quirk just evolve because you wanted to live this bad like the dire situation you're in and stuff like this and uh, Toga, she's like, yeah, I, I studied Uraka's quirk. I've studied, I've studied uh, Uraka's quirk for, you know, this long because she wants to be like Uraka or Ochiko, so that, cause she, she, cause she's in love with Deku. We all know that because she saw him all beat up and bloody, and she knows Deku trusted trusts Ochiko so much to where she was. She wants to be like Ochiko to where Deku like trusts her or at least cares about her. So she's like, yeah, I've been studying her so long, blah, blah, blah. 
and she activates she activates she activates the quirk on all of them and uh and she uses the release part of it and completely decimates them she dropped it she put she dropped them from such a high altitude that when they come down like all you see is blood puddles splashing out of it like i'm not sure you know because this is manga and anime you know people 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 get their whole guts blown apart and dragged like 30 feet but yet they still somehow recover like (laughs) beyond all medical science but yeah she completely drops them that's how the chapter ends with them just in a puddle of blood and and viscera so the the takeaway from this is the fact that toga can actually take people's quirk and we do realize remember that she took that one little drop of deku's blood if she gets his she gets a hold on him again does she get uh does she get uh, one for all? Does she get those six quirks that's also in there? Or or where the League of Villains can go from this because they essentially have a Nomu on their team, basically. Not, well, nah, like a, a less, a generic Nomu, I'd say. So to where she could actually copy quirks and the people who take them. So maybe she can use, collect blood from Dobby. She can use blood from Tomara. She can get everybody else's and turn into them and create their thing. But we also know that Toga is, like, psychotic, and she collects the blood from the people that, or at least she wants to collect the blood from people that she, like, uh, that she love or want to be like. But uh, if you got any thoughts or comments, please leave them below. And as always, wherever you are, have a great rest of your day. And if you made it this far in the video, Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm gone. Peace.